Hi there. Hope all of you had a great Palm Sunday. Happy Palm Sunday to you. We had snow. We had a little snow today. Uh, so, makes me want to start singing, I'm dreaming of a white Easter. But I guess not. I also missed church today. Uh, and the reason wasn't because of the snow, because we did not get much. The roads were fine and everything. The reason I missed is we had a power outage. Our power was out. So my alarm clock did go off. And on top of that, when you have an electric garage and the power goes off, you can't open your garage, except manually. And my car was in the garage. So that's why I missed it. Okay, I want to address on today's program, or today's video, I should say, uh, something that Kel Thomas talked about in a radio commentary. But before that, to go along with what I'm going to talk about, I want to read a scripture from the Bible. Hebrews 12, 2. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And here is part of the radio commentary that Kel Thomas did on March 10th, 2009. When it comes to religion, Cal writes, the USA is now a land of freelancers. Thus begins a front page story in USA Today. The percentage of people who call themselves Christians has dropped more than 11% in a generation. Details are in the new American Religious Identification Survey. And Cal also says this, I have some theories about this. One is an overemphasis on politics which has turned off a lot of people. Another is over overemphasis on money. Watch any of the religious TV shows and virtually all of them are begging for money. And, and, and there is an easy believism that's being sold. Accept Christ and your life will be wonderful. This life often isn't wonderful, but the next one Jesus made possible is. Cal concludes this radio counter by saying God's people need to address the issues in this report. Okay, let's take a look at uh, what Kel said, step by step, one by one. Politics. I believe it's important who we, I believe it's important who we have in office, and I believe it's a duty of us believers to vote and pray for those in office, all our leaders. Uh, but when it comes to politics and voting, our power is limited. But when it comes to God's power, it has no limit. Okay? And we need to welcome people into our churches, regardless of politics. And we should not be preaching our churches' politics from the left or the right. We could address issues that they t uh, line in with, uh, apply to Scripture as far as political issues and moral issues go. But let's not forget Jesus died for Democrats and for Republicans, which may shock some of you. And some churches would have been better be better if they would take the cross down and put the Democrat donkey or the Republican elephant up. Okay, so politics should not be. Politics has turned people off. Okay, and then Cal also says an overemphasis on money. I understand that TV ministries need money to keep going and all that, but let's not forget what that scripture, I believe in Philippians, say, where God says, I will provide all your needs. Okay? I am one, probably a few, that were concerned about concern when President Bush came out with his faith-based initiative to, that the government was going to give money to faith-based groups to help people. And I believe uh, Bush's goal and motive was totally pure and good. He wanted to uh, you know, encourage the faith-based groups and he wanted to help people and he saw the real answer to people's problems come from those, what those faith-based groups are teaching. However, any time you take money from government, there can be strings tied. And it may, you know, some ministry may be told they can't preach Jesus or teach the Bible. I think it's better to depend on God and keep preaching and teaching Jesus and His Word. Okay? We shouldn't depend on Uncle Sam so much. Okay. Then Kel talks at last about easy believism. Kel is right. Too often we tell people God has a wonderful plan for the life which he does, but that plan at times would tangle trials, hardships, you know, 
and all that. Let's look at Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Okay? Often, the God's good plans, we're not going to see in this life. We're going to see in heaven. When you come to Christ, all your problems won't go away. The problem where you will spend eternity will go away. If you are thinking of coming to Christ, and I'm glad you are, don't come to him to get rid don't come to him to have a perfect life here in this world. Come to him because he is worthy of your life and you need him and you need him to be in heaven one day. Okay? Some of the blessings of the Christian life are in the future. Okay? Not in this life. Also, God doesn't take away our pain and our problems at times. He will help and go through them with us and will help us cope with them. But he doesn't take them away. James 1.12 says, Blessed is the man or woman who perseveres under trial, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Something like that. I may not have that verse exactly right. Okay? We need to focus on Jesus and reaching people for his gospel and not be concerned, not preach politics, not be concerned about money. God will provide or what we need. And we need not to falsely promise people something in this life that's not going to happen. Let's look back at our main text, Hebrews 12, 2. Hebrews 12, 2 here. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scoring it shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Our focus needs to be Jesus Christ and Jesus alone and reaching people for him. Not politics, not promising people things that they can't get in this life, not begging for money. Um, post any thoughts you have on this video. Email me any comments, questions you have for my blog. Thanks for watching. Ha Until next time, I'm Billy. I'll see you.